Hello and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. We have a really special guest with us today. But before I get into it, let's talk about what it means to be in sales. Whether you're in B2B, B2C, starting off in a new sales role can be a little, maybe possibly intimidating. Um, not only are you like given a plethora of knowledge and things that you need to memorize, but then you're like thrown out into the field and you have to kind of figure out how to fly or figure out how to swim, whatever you prefer. And sometimes that can not feel the best. Sometimes I can feel really, really scary. And my, my guest that's coming up, she's really, really amazing human being. Not only does she have the willingness to work her ass off, but she also is newer in sales and had a really crazy experience where like they kind of put her to the test and she had to fly or she would fall. And she's flying right now. She's flying, she's soaring, she's doing the damn thing. I'm super, super proud of her. So I want to welcome her. Amanda, what's up, Queen? Can you come us, introduce us? Who are you? What do you do? What do you sell? How did you, you know, even start this thing in the first place? Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me, Kayla. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and just share whatever inspiration I can with other women who are in sales. I work on a B2C female fitness coaching offer. So we do, we have a 12-month program where women come into our program and transform their bodies and transform their lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it. I love inspiring women to be the best that they can. Um, so that's just a little bit about me and and what I'm selling. Um, but what other questions do you have for me? Yeah, no. So I want to talk about this being the beginning of your journey, right? Like how long right. have you even been in sales? Yeah, I think it's just right around two months today. Brand new. So like coming into this since like day one to right now, like what have been like the primary emotions that you've been experiencing um, going into this field, like having to figure out if you're going to sink or swim, like can you give us just a little bit of insight or maybe a story that you can tell us of how it's felt being in this new change of life? Yeah, I'd say the number one emotion is determination. Mm. The grit that I know that I wanted to make this change. I wanted to be in this industry. And I not only want to be in sales, but I want to be like the fucking best. Mm. And I have that high standard for myself. So there's a lot of determination that goes into that. But at the same time, like you kind of said in the intro, it's scary. Like there is a lot of pressure. And a lot of times, like as I was figuring this out over the past eight weeks, like I was shitting my pants. Oh my God. Not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> in what way? In what way you were you shitting your pants, Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> well, good question, because in sales, like there's so much pressure to perform and to meet standards and meet your KPI. And being brand new, like I knew that I had to meet those standards or, you know, be cut from the team. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the situation that I was put in within my first four weeks. Like I hadn't collected that much cash and they were like, hey, this isn't going to work out. Like we're terminating your contract effective imme immediately. Like that was a message I got. And I said, hey, 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 like, let's have a conversation. Like, let's get on the phone and talk about this because one, they're trying to let me go over a direct message. And two, I was like, let me fight for myself because at that point I had already invested in some advanced sales training and I knew that if I just can get another week, if I could get another, you know, four days in, I could turn it around. And so that's what I did. And so fortunately they're like, yeah, like we'll leave the calendar open for a couple more days. And in those couple of days, I was able to get some sales and turn it around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll, let's go back into this really fast because I feel like a lot of times we as women, we as salespeople or just people in general get a message and they just accept it, mm -hmm. right? Like you get a message, um, even in, in a sales career, like somebody cancels the appointment and you just accept it versus asking a question versus trying to get them to understand that they're possibly making a mistake. Um, you know, when you saw that there, right? Somebody telling you like, hey, we're letting you go. Like, what was your communication back to them in order for them to open this back up? Because it wasn't like, hey, no, wait, please. You, like, there, you had to say something. What was that? Yeah, I first diffused. Like, hey, hey, name, I totally understand what's going on with my close rate. Totally understand. You know, are you open to just having a conversation, like, from my perspective? 
And then we get on a huddle and we're talking it through. And I'm like fighting for myself, like pretty much in tears. And she's like, hey, like, let's pump the brakes and we'll give it a couple more days. Like, I'm totally open to doing that. Mm. And then what happened? And then I closed some deals, but my close rate was still, you know, now we're talking two or three weeks later, it's still not necessarily competing with top performers. And so I got another message. And this time it was like, hey, Amanda, we've turned off your inbound appointment calendar. You have the opportunity to work outbound for two weeks. And if your performance improves, you will get your calendar turned back on. If not, we will terminate your contract. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) If you've never had this experience before, um, first of all, as a sales rep, right, there's like the lucky sales reps that get inbound appointments. And this is mostly in like the B2C market, high ticket sales where somebody went through some type of ad and this ad has led to a lead or maybe you have setters that are calling qualifying people and they lead to a closer, right? And it goes on a calendar. And so you're really, really blessed as a sales rep if you have inbound leads that just come on your calendar. Some of us have been doing this for a long time, never had that opportunity because ads are newer in the years to come, yada, yada. So the fact that this all gets turned off and you're brand new in sales and you're used to like being spoon fed leads. I can't imagine (laughs) that's coming up inside of your body. You're like, holy crap. So give us a play by play for the next two weeks. Like, what did that even look like? Well, this is where I shit my pants. I was like, really? Like, again, and I got the message and then I send a voice note back like, hey, totally understand. Like, I'm going to do my best to show up for the calls that I have less left on my calendar because I still had mm-hmm. you know, a couple days booked out where it wasn't turned off yet. So I still had like 10 appointments to take. And I was like, I'm going to do my best to show up for these women yeah. and be, be my best. OK, totally appreciate it. Thanks for the heads up. And then the response that I got from that was like, wow, Amanda, like you're so um, not everybody responded in this way. Other people on the team who had their calendars turned off. Mm. So, you know, my sales manager was like, that shows me a lot about your character. I was Mm. like, "Okay, cool. Like, (laughs) well, now I have to go close some deals. (laughs) Okay, that's great. Hopefully my character can make some money. (laughs) So I think it was that day I closed three deals back to back. And they're like, oh, like how embarrassing of us to turn your calendar off. And then the same day with the appointments that were already there, they closed. Kind of funny. And then they weren't ready to turn it back on. He said, you know, if you could close one more on Friday, I'll turn it back on. Mm -hmm. Well, I did close one more on Friday. And so then I took Saturday and Sunday completely off and totally unplugged and got back and, you know, kind of like my come to Jesus moment of like, why am I here? What am I doing this for? Yeah, and just totally unplugged and went and did things that I love to do. I went surfing. I went rock climbing. Oh my god, that's awesome! <laughs> and I came back on Monday, you know, ready to rock outbound because I didn't have any appointments. And we're going into our morning huddle, and I get a message of like, "Hey, Amanda, we've decided to turn your appointment, your calendar back on." Oh. I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> like, let's go." <laughs> Okay, so let's pause, pause, because I want to well, talk about this because I think this is so important and so many women do not do this. And I I see uh, like frustration and burnout because of not doing this, mm-hmm. right? The ability to unplug. I really, really like that terminology, that phrase, um, because I feel like as women, we do not really understand that we are not built to produce and like always like go, 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 go. In fact, like we don't even produce enough testosterone as guys or not in regards to enough, but as much. So our testosterone replenishes, I believe, every like 24, 48 hours. I would have to like double check my resources on that. But I think for guys, it's every couple of hours. Right. So so like we're not built to like go, go, go. And sometimes when you get bad news, what do you do? You panic. And, you're like, you know, I need to get this done and this done and this done. And then all of a sudden you're like overworking yourself you could be calling everybody on saturday and sunday but you didn't do that you honored yourself and you're like hey i need a minute to like recheck my priorities and take care of me do something that i love move my body um take a break um and come back and it's like because you were in flow and because you were trusting the process like everything worked out for you like what do you feel like your perspective is on that because that's just mine but what's yours I have no idea like what kind of fucking mind games they were playing or like what like 
but they didn't do any work, you know, from those days. And then they just decided to magically turn it back on. Like, I don't know what that came from. But then I'll tell you this is after I took that unplug couple days, like that was the first time I'd done that in like six weeks or something ridiculous. So I knew I was like, okay, I need to make this more regular. And then on Monday, I had an appointment come through, you know, within a couple hours of having the calendar on. Mm. And I closed her for my first painful. Let's go. <laughs> like, hey, we turned back on her calendar. She brought in a bunch of cash. It just like reaffirms every single thing that, you know, you did. And didn't you just hit like top of your leaderboard or something like that? I think that some of the girls were saying, mentioning something. Is that true? Yeah. So, I mean, from that day that I had my first painful, I had a great week. The following week was even better. And I hit top of the leaderboard as far as cash collected um, and then commissions earned. And I was the first person on my team to hit the new bonus structure because we just like rechanged the commission structure and I was the first person to get the bonus. And like, that's really interesting. Um, okay, but I that's don't. Awesome. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like, ha, huh, like the biggest thing that you can do for somebody is like, I think the biggest, like, let me show you is like massive success, you know, and you're still at the beginning of your journey, right? But it's just like, not only did you do one thing, but you did multiple things. And I feel like everything lined up so beautifully for you, right? And let's go back to your attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, let's go back to that because not everybody, right, gets feedback and takes massive levels of responsibility for it, accountability for your own actions, right? Like you never were like, oh, well, like screw that. Like this is not fair, blah, blah, blah. Like even though it was, it felt unfair. But you were like, hey, you know what? You're right. Like, let me fix this. Let me show you. Let me do this. And you did. And you did the damn thing. And I think that because of your attitude, whenever you give into the world, you absolutely receive. So like, I really honor you because most people don't have the willingness to take uh, feedback or to be able to be put in a financially scary position and just take a deep breath and be like, I got this, you know, even though it not have felt like that the whole time, like you still like went after it, you know, so I, I really commend you for uh, stepping into the unknown and the scary and like, look, it's paying off, right? Right. And that attitude of just the first thing I said was like grit, determination. And that's why I'm here. I want to be the best and I'm not going to give up in the face of adversity. Whereas other people on my team who got that same message of like, hey, we're turning off your inbound. You could work outbound for two weeks. They had that response of like, this isn't fair. I'm actually a good closer. I actually deserve to have inbound appointments. And they got cut. Like they did not stick around. They are not on the team no longer. Wow. Wow. Man. And now, okay, so hold on. Because I, I want to go into understanding this new sales role because obviously you're learning, you're growing, you know, from the very beginning, like it's not really your fault. Like you're brand new. You don't really know what you're doing. Right. You're learning and developing, which is great. But what do you feel like the difference was between when you first started on calls to where you were closing the paid in fulls? And like, what do you feel like the biggest difference is from everything that you learned? You know, from there, I know that you're in our program too. Like, what do you feel has like supported you the most to be able to close people. Mm. Well, there's this really awesome book that is called Atomic Habits that Laura, one of my coaches, recommended to me. And he talks about this. Uh, I wish I had the book in front of me, but there's this graph essentially of like where you think your results should be, you know, linearly like going upwards. And there's this potential of like the breakthrough. Mm. Most people stop you know, they get disappointed because they're not seeing the results because they've been trying for a month or three months or a year and they're not seeing results yet and they get stuck right before the breakthrough. So for me, the biggest thing was like not giving up because I knew that the breakthrough was just around the corner. And if I were to keep pushing for it, it would come and it and it did. And so in that time, like what was the biggest thing? Like I was practicing my skills. I was going to bed at nine o'clock, waking up at 6 a.m., going to the gym, eating breakfast, like doing those things religiously yeah. and knowing that that is going to get me to, you know, sharpening my skills and getting to the breakthrough, doing sales training, listening to motivational content, like doing all of those things religiously and just trusting the process, mm -hmm. not giving up right before the breakthrough. Yeah. Doing the work disciplined. But you said practicing your skills. And I, I love how you pointed out both because I feel like sometimes people only do one, right? 
Like I only focus on skills, 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 and then they don't take care of themselves or take care of their body or their health, right? And so then they're tired, depleted, don't have energy, or like they feel uh, frustrated and they're not emotionally well. So I like how you mentioned like all the things. You're like taking care of our body. I'm making sure I'm getting sleep. I'm like, like mentally getting prepared and skills. What did you do to practice skills? Like, what does that mean? Practice my skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So obviously I have the luxury of like having lots of appointments scheduled for me. So like that's an opportunity to practice. Um, I was also getting feedback on my calls from people on my team, from my coach, attending live trainings, as well as watching replays of stuff. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think the biggest skill is tonality. Mm -hmm. And just, (laughs) I know everyone says that, but on the phone, like I don't sell over Zoom, I sell on the phone and tonality is so big because they can't see me. They have no idea what I look like. And so they only can feel the vibrations of my voice. And so for me, just getting to that place of curiosity of like, hey, I really want to help you. I see you, what you're going through. You're not alone. Like, let me show you the solution. Mm. So I think that I had a big tonality breakthrough. And then also just more time practicing the skill of you know, listening, pitching to their needs, um, tailoring the pitch to them. Um, and then also like having a reciprocity as far as the investment goes. Like, hey, if you pay in full today, you're going to save $2,000. And that's what most of our clients do. So it was a combination of those things. Yeah. Okay. So you did something, right? So whenever you say most of our clients do something, you're like doing the majority rule. And a lot of humans, we like to do what most people are doing. So like a conscious level, right? We're like more in line. But you said that as if like you didn't always do that. So at the beginning, were you not trying to get people to pay in full or were you just trying to get something in? What was the mindset before? Oh, yeah, totally. Like I had no skills. I had, there was no framework given to me. It was just like, well, you could pitch it however you want. Everyone does it differently. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try and and throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. And what that led to was ultimately, yeah, like trying to get something through the door, even if that was the smallest collected payment plan, yeah. which ultimately was leading to me not having any, com- any commissions and then not collecting the most cash on hand. So then the company sees that as not valuable if I'm not collecting cash on hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think that sometimes that's scary. Um, asking for uh, money, especially if it's like a lot of money in our eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we also have to understand that there's two things. One side, it helps the business, right? Another side, well, I guess there's three. It helps the business collect more cash flow so that they actually can pay for more marketing and bring you more leads. Mm -hmm. I know it helps your your bank account because of commissions. But most importantly, it actually helps the client more. I'll tell you why. Um, you know, sometimes when we make a big decision and it's a little bit more uncomfortable for us financially, we take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. And so it's like when they make that energy exchange, like they're willing to do the work sometimes more than the payment plan. Sometimes I see payment plans and somehow they, they stop and they like, Hey, make an excuse and they like drop off. But when they fade in full, they're like, Hey, like I've committed fully. I'm going to get everything I can out of this. Do you feel like that's the same experience on your side as well from the people that you've created as into clients so far? Uh, oh, yeah. And, and I explain that, too. Whenever an objection comes up, I'm like, hey, you got skin in the game. If you've never stuck with something more than 30 days because you just give up, like, how is that going to feel when you have thousands of dollars invested in something? Are you going to give up? Mm. No. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I really honor you for what you're trying to uh, step into, right? Deciding that you're going to be the best and <laughs> not the best. Well, it's a good thing. It's not the best w- of like anyone else on the team. It's the best you, right? I choose to be the best possible version of me. What does that mean? That means I want to get the best sleep that I can. I want to get the best health that I can, the best body that I can. Like you go surfing, like, holy shit, girl, I have no idea how you do that. Oh my, <laughs> bow down. I wish I could do that just to get a cool picture. I tried to do it once in Costa Rica. The wave just kept coming. I was like, I'm not getting in there. So, you know, I I honor you for figuring that out. Maybe one day I'll try again. Um, but like you choosing to be the best you, which means that you get to increase your skill tonality. 
right? And so you mastering that is going to literally change your income, change your life, change everything that you're doing. So um, like kudos to you for continuously like growing that. And um, what do you feel like is next? Like, what do you feel like is the next thing that you get to master so that you can grow in your sales career? I don't know. I want to be the best. I want to be at the top every single week and I want to people to come to me and I want to ultimately become a leader on mm-hmm. my team. Mm-hmm. And leadership is something that I've always had in different roles, uh, you know, prior to sales. And so I would love to be able to step into leadership and inspire other new salespeople um, share skills, share what I've learned. And not that that has to happen anytime soon, but when I'm thinking on the perspective of my career, um, I mean, first things first is I want to get good and I want to consistently make like $20,000 a month. Like that's first things first. And then as time goes on, I want to be able to give back and contribute to others and help other women in the same situation that I'm in, you know, keep going and believe in themselves. Yeah. And you're being inspiration to women right now, you know, I'm sure <laughs> listening that is not in sales, you know, and that maybe wants to step into that and is afraid. It's like, oh my God, I don't know. Um, and sometimes it's like going into the unknown and the uncomfortability and having that grit that you were talking about, that termination, so that you, you can open up new levels of opportunity and new levels of income that maybe weren't an option for you before. Right. And um, I think that that's really, really amazing and beautiful because there's somebody out there listening right now that's like, maybe that could be me. And if that's you, girl, like you've got this. Um, and one last question I'll ask you, Amanda, right? Because you came into my program, um, you know, for we just partnered with Seventh Level, um, Jerry Minor, NAPQ methodology, right? Using neuro emotional persuasion and questioning and giving it in a feminine perspective is what, you know, what we did, right? With the mm-hmm. sales with seventh level red what has been your experience like with any pq like what what has or not what or how has dear lord words are so beautiful how has that methodology been able to support you right in addition to the tonality so that you can kind of understand the process like has it been helpful to give you that structure with the flow that you want to be in or can you kind of elaborate on your perspective of it yeah i mean short answer is it's a hundred percent helpful. You don't know what you don't know. And so just getting that knowledge in whatever avenue I could get that, whether that's role plays or live calls, replays, portal stuff, it's a hundred percent helpful. And what's been the most impactful for me is just learning how to disarm somebody, you know, asking questions to disarm and just sound curious. And and one story that I wanted to share when you thought about like when a prospect cancels, you know, do you just accept that cancel or do you ask a question? And I turned this around one time. She wanted to cancel. She's like, hey, I saw the price online. I really can't afford it. And I was like, oh, like I saw in your application, like you're wanting to be in the best shape of your life at 50 years old. Like regardless, if you want to sign up, I want to just I have time for the phone call. Let's see how you know I can help regardless of the program. And then when we got on the call, she was like, yeah, I saw it was this much. And I was like, oh, but did you know that we have payment plans and it's only this much per month? And she's like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. If you have payment plans, I'm good to go. Let's sign up. Oh, my God. Yeah. So she she went from wanting to cancel to me saying like, hey, let's just see how I can help. And yeah. that question, how I can help, was an NEPQ, you know, frame. Yeah. And the the sense of serving, right? Like, hey, like coming to her to serve. You know, uh, other questions that you could ask her is like, yeah, you know, I completely understand, you know, how are you going to be able to get in the best shape of your life without, you know, having the support? Look, I'm, I just want her to call. Like, I'm mm-hmm. kind of something that I can. Um, but I love your heart, Amanda, because I think that your heart is going to lead you a long ways. My intention is to serve you, right? And and that's what you did. Like, hey, my intention is to serve you. And because you did and you made it about her and not about you closing the deal, it was easy for you to get somebody to commit. Um, when you make it all about, the numbers and oh my god I hope I hit this and this and this like it's very difficult for you to stay in that wave because it gets tiring uh it's exhausting having to go 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 all the time but when you're serving it gives you energy so if you're continuously helping and pouring into people like you're going to be fulfilled and then you keep doing your thing as long as you keep taking care of yourself and sir <laughs> um but I appreciate having you on here today. I mean, uh, I think that you're absolutely amazing, incredible. Is there anything else that you want to say? Like if there's a new person in sales right now and 
and they're like, man, like this freaking sucks. Like, oh my God. Or maybe they just got their inbound calendar taken away. Is there any advice that you would give to someone that's new, being that you are literally in their shoes and you're getting out of their shoes? Like, what would you tell them? Yeah, sit with yourself. Like, is this actually for you? Why do you want to be here? Because it might not be for you, babe. Like, it takes grit and blood, sweat and tears day in and day out. And it might not be for you. And that is okay. And you could find the thing that you can pour into that serves you. But if it is for you and you feel like, hey, I'm supposed to be here. I want this. Like, don't stop. Just don't stop and just keep going and applying yourself and investing in yourself and practicing and you will get better. Mm, I love it. Words of wisdom from Miss Amanda. Thank you, Queen. I, I'm just really, really grateful having you here today. Um, I wish you the best of luck. You have so much greatness and power inside of you. I cannot wait to see what type of leader you're going to become. Your heart is huge. So you're going to help a lot of other ladies be able to vary all this out. Because I know that it's scary being on the, that side. But on the other side, you feel like you can have that wisdom and understanding and be able to make it make sense because when it's new, it's a little scary and it's hard to navigate. Once you figure it out, like that tool, those skills, they can never go away, you know? So love you. I honor you. Anything else you want to say to anybody on the audience? No, I honor you, Queen. Thank you. Pleasure. And make sure you subscribe, guys. If you find um, any other woman that you think that this would benefit, please send it her way and we will see you on the next episode. See you later.